the loneliest gorilla in the world. When the Big Top Mall was first built, it smelled of new paint, fresh hay, and humans came to visit from morning till night. They drifted past my domain like logs on a lazy river. Lately, a day may go by without a single visitor. Max says he's worried. He says I'm not cute anymore. He says, Ivan, you have lost your magic, old guy, and you used to be a hit. It's true that some of my visitors don't linger the way they used to. They stare through the glass like the, and click their tongues. They frown while I watch my TV. He looks lonely, they say. Not long ago, a little boy stood before my glass, tears streaming down his smooth red cheeks. He must be the loneliest gorilla in the world, he said, clutching my mo his mother's hand. At times like that, I wish humans could understand me the way I understand them. It's not so bad, I wanted to tell the little boy. With enough time, you can get used to almost anything. TV. My visitors are often surprised when they see my the TV Mac has put in my domain. They seem to find it odd, the sight of a gorilla staring at a tiny human in a box. Sometimes I wonder, though. Isn't the way they stare at me sitting in my tiny box just as strange? My TV is old. It doesn't always work. And sometimes days will go by before anyone remembers to turn it on. I'll watch anything, but I'm particularly fond of cartoons with their bright jungle colors. I especially enjoy it when someone slips on a banana peel. Bob, my dog friend, loves TV almost as much as I do. He prefers to watch professional bowling and cat food commercials. Bob and I have seen many romance movies, too. In a romance, there's much hugging and sometimes face licking. Ugh. I have to set yet to see a single romance starring a gorilla. We also enjoy Western movies. In a Western, someone always says, This town ain't big enough for the both of us, Sheriff. In a Western. And you can tell who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. The good guys always win. Bob says westerns are nothing like real life. The Nature Show. I have been in my domain for 9,855 days alone. For a while, when I was young and foolish, I thought I was the last gorilla on earth. I tried not to dwell on it. Still, it's hard to say upbeat when you think there's no more of you. Then one night, after I watched a movie about men in black hats with guns and feeble-minded horses, a different show came on. It was not a cartoon. It was not a romance. It was not a western. I saw a lush forest and I heard birds murmuring. The grass moved. The trees trussled. And I saw him. He was a bit threadbare and scrawny and not as good looking as I am, to be honest. But sure enough, he was a gorilla. And suddenly, as he appeared, the gorilla vanished. And in his place was a scruffy white animal called, I learned, a polar bear. And then a chubby water creature called a manatee. And then another animal. And then another. All night, I sat wondering about the gorilla I glimpsed. Where did he live? Would he ever come visit? If there was if there was a he somewhere, could there also be a she as well? Or was it just one, the two of us all in the world trapped in our own separate boxes? Stella. Stella says she is sure I will see another real live gorilla someday. And I believe her because she is even older than I am and has eyes like black stars and knows more than I will ever know. Stella is a mountain. Next to her, I am a rock, and Bob is a grain of sand. Every night, the th when the stories the stores close and the moon washes over the world with a milky light, Stella and I talk. We don't have much in common, but we have enough. We are huge and alone, and we both love yogurt raisins. Sometimes Stella tells stories of her childhood, of leafy canopies hidden by mists in the Busy songs of flowering water or flowing water. 
Unlike me, she recalls every single detail of her past. Stella loves the moon with its untroubled smile. I love the feel of the sun on my belly. She says, it's quite a belly, my friend. And I say, thank you. And so is yours. We talk, but not too much. Elephants, like gorillas, do not waste words. Stella used to perform in a large, famous circus, and she still does some of those tricks for our show. During one stunt, Stella stands on her hind legs while Snickers jumps on her head. It's hard to stand on your hind legs when you weigh more than 40 men. If you're a circus elephant and you stand on your hind leg while a dog jumps on your head, you get a treat. If you do not, the claw stick comes swinging. Elephant hide is thick as bark on ancient trees, but a claw stick can pierce it like a leaf. Once Stella saw the trainer hit a bull elephant with a claw stick. A bull is like a silverback, noble, contained, calm, like a cobra is calm. And when the claw stick caught in the bull's flesh, he tossed the trainer into the air with his tusk. The man flew, Stella said, like an ugly bird. She never saw that bull again. Stella's trunk. Stella's trunk is a miracle. She can pick up a single peanut with the elegant with elegant precision. She can tickle a passing mouse, tap the shoulder of a dozen a dozing keeper. Her trunk is remarkable, and still it can unlatch the door of her tumble down domain. Circling Stella's legs are long ago scars from chains she wore as a youth. Her bracelets, she called them. When she worked for the famous circus, Stella had to balance on a pedestal for one of the most difficult tricks. One day she fell off and injured her foot. When she came, when she went lame, they lagged behind the other elephants the circus sold her to Mac. Stella's foot never healed completely. She limps when she walks, and sometimes her foot gets infected when she stands in one place for too long. Last winter, Stella's foot swelled twice its normal size. She had a fever, and she lay damp on the damp, cold floor in the domain for five days. They were very, very long days. Even now, I'm not sure she's completely better. She never complains, though, and it's hard to know. At the Big Top Mall, no one bothers with iron shackles or bristly ropes tied to a bolt in the floor is all that's required. They think I'm too old to cause trouble, Stella says. Old age, she says. It's a powerful disguise. A plan. It's been two days since anyone came to visit. Mac is in a bad mood. He says that we are all losing money, hand over fist. He says he is going to sell the whole lot of us. When Thelma, a blue and yellow macaw, demands, Kiss me, big boy! From the third time in ten minutes, Mac throws a soda can at her. Thelma's wings are clipped so she can't fly, but she still can hop. She leaps over it just in the nick of time. Pucker up, she says with a shrill whistle. Mac stomps into his office and slams the door shut. I wonder if my visitors have grown tired of me. Maybe if I learned a new trick or two, it will help. Humans do seem to enjoy watching me eat. Luckily, I'm always hungry. And I'm a gifted eater. A silverback must eat 45 pounds of food a day if he wants to stay a silverback. 45 pounds of fruit and leaves and seeds and stems and bark and vines and rotten wood. And also, I enjoy an occasional insect. I'm going to try to eat more. Maybe then we'll get more visitors. Tomorrow I'll eat 50 pounds of food. Maybe even 55. That should make Mac happy. Bob. I explain my plan to Bob. Ivan, he says, trust me on this one. Your problem is not your appetite. He hops onto my chest and licks my chin and checking for any leftovers. Bob is a stray, which means he does not have permanent address. He is also speedy and wily so that the, the mall workers long ago gave up trying to catch him. Bob can sneak into the cracks and crevices like a tr- tracked rat. 
He lives well off the ends of hot dogs he pulls from the trash for the de- for dessert. He laps up spilled lemonade and splattered ice cream cones. I've tried to share my food with Bob, but he says he's picky eater, and he prefers to hunt for himself. Bob is a tiny, wiry, fast, like a barking squirrel. He is a nut-colored, and he has big ears, and his tail moves like weeds in the wind, spiraling and dancing. Bob's tail makes me dizzy and confused. It is meaning with meaning within meetings, like human words. I'm sad, it says. I'm happy, it says. Beware. I'm tiny, but I have teeth and I, I'm sharp. Gorillas don't have any use for tails. Our feelings are uncomplicated. Our rumps are unadorned. Bob used to have three brothers, two sisters. Humans tossed them out of a truck into a freeway. And they were just a few weeks old. Bob rolled into a ditch. The others did not. His first night on the highway, Bob slept in an icy mud of the ditch. When he woke up, he was so cold that his legs would not bend for an hour. The next night, Bob slept under some dirty hay near the big top mall garbage bins. The following night, Bob found a spot in the corner of my domain where the glass had broken. I dreamed that I'd eaten a furry donut, and when I woke up in the dark, I discovered a tiny puppy snoring on top of my belly. It had been so long since I'd felt comfort of another's warmth that I wasn't sure what to do. Not that I hadn't had visitors. Mac had been in my domain, of course, and many other keepers. I'd seen um, my share of rats zip past and an occasional wayward sparrow had flutter through the hole in my ceiling, but they never stayed long. I didn't move all night long for fear of waking Bob. Wild. Once I asked Bob why he didn't want to go home. Humans, I'd noticed, seemed to irrationally fond of dogs, and I could see why a puppy would be easier to cuddle with well than, say, me, a gorilla. Everywhere in my home is my home, Bob answered. I am a wild beast, my friend, untamed and undaunted. I told Bob he could work for the shows like Snickers, the poodle who was ride Stella. Bob said Snickers sleeps on a pink pillow in Mac's office. He said she eats foul-smelling meat from a can. He made a face, his lips curled, revealing tiny needles of teeth. Poodles, he said. They're parasites. Picasso. Matt gave me some fresh crayons, a yellow one, and ten pieces of paper. Time to earn your keep, Picasso, he mutters. I wonder who this Picasso is. Does he have a tire swing like me? Does he ever eat his crayons? I scan my domain. Why is it yellow? A banana. I'll draw a banana. The paper tears, or tears, but only a little. I lean back. And Mac picks up the drawing. Another and another scribble, he says. One down, nine to go. What else is yellow, I wonder? Scanning my domain. I draw another banana. And then I draw eight more. Three visitors. Three visitors are here. A woman, a boy, and a girl. I strut across my domain for them. I dangle from my tire swing. I eat three banana peels in a row. The boy spits at my window. The girl throws a handful of pebbles. And sometimes, I'm glad there's glass there. 